We have all heard the story. You know the one. About how life first arose spontaneously in the chemical soup of the early earth. You know how it goes. We are told that over the course of millions of years, strange chemicals mixed together and interacted with strange forms of energy, and one day the first cell arose, and the rest was prehistory. It is in every high school science textbook. But is this really science? Despite hundreds of years of research, no scientist has ever produced even a simple living cell by mixing together chemicals and energy. The reason for this is that producing life from non-life violates known scientific and mathematical fact. The odds of one cell appearing by chance. <clears throat> there are chemical reasons for why it would be difficult to form a cell by random natural processes. However, these are not going to be the focus of this video. Also, in biology, there is a law known as the law of biogenesis, which states that life only comes from life and cannot form spontaneously. In science, something can only be considered a law if it is observed 100% of the time and is never violated. To state that a law exists is all fine and dandy, but we must ask the question, why is this law the case in the first place? Despite the common misconception that there is a such a thing as a truly simple life form, even the simplest life form is incredibly complex. The cell requires many little machines which it produces just to perform the most basic life functions that are needed for survival. Without hundreds of proteins performing hundreds of functions, even the most basic first cell in any environment would fail to survive. As Lawrence Tisdall, a geneticist and a creationist, pointed out in an interview on the Michael Corrin show, it has been shown that even on paper, the simplest cell would require 200 genes to survive in even the best environment. He then went on to explain that in reality, it would take at least 397 genes in order to survive. The latter number having been reported in the scientific journal Nature on the 6th of January 2006. So, what's the big deal about 397 genes? This will take a little math. Let's say that we have one gene, and this one gene codes for a typical protein. The odds of forming the information for one given protein of 1,000 amino acids in length is 1 out of 20 to the thousandth power. This is worse than the odds of a blind man picking out one single grain of sand from all of the countless grains of sand in the entire world. Better yet, this is worse than the odds of picking out just one specified individual atom from the entire universe. The odds of picking out one individual atom from the entire universe is 1 out of 10 to the 80th power. Even if, for the sake of argument, the cosmic lottery were won, it would have to be won hundreds and hundreds of times in the same exact place at the same exact time. And this does not even begin to address the need for proteins, DNA, RNA, lipids, and the rest of the cellular components to somehow assemble themselves into the automated city that is the cell. Just to make a comparison, this is like taking a tornado 
sending it through a junkyard full of different parts for cars. And somehow, having all these different parts of the cars assemble themselves into a perfectly functioning automobile. The tires go on the wheels, the wheels attach to the axles, the axles attach to the body of the car. The motor assembles itself and puts itself in the right place in the car, the hood latches itself onto the front, the windows adjust themselves inside of the body of the car. The steering wheel screws itself on, the seats lock in place and just so happen to have some screws come along and screw themselves in so the car the car forms into a perfectly functioning automobile. If someone were to win the lottery every day for a year, they would be put in jail for fraud. If a monkey ever by chance typed just one line of Shakespeare, it would be considered proof of intelligence. Either that monkey had truly learned Shakespeare, or someone was playing a hoax. The odds of typing out to be or not to be, that is the question, ignoring even the odds of putting the spaces in the right place. The odds are 3.93 out of 10 to the 39th. This is much worse than the odds of getting just one protein by chance, or the information for that protein. Despite the evolutionist claim, which is an ad hoc claim, that science is not allowed to even consider the possibility of an intelligence, when we look at design in nature, it is intelligent and reasonable to conclude that intelligence is the most scientific answer to the question of how did life get here. To put it another way, if a spaceship were to crash to, crash to Earth, we would look inside the spaceship and see computers. We'd see robots. We'd see robots that were building other robots. And would the atheists say that we are not allowed to consider that some intelligence greater than man built this spaceship? No. Everybody would agree that some intelligence built this spaceship. Yet, when we look at the cell, what do we see? We see computers far more advanced than any computers we've ever been able to build. We see machines that build more of themselves. And saying that it got here by evolution does not work. Because that first cell had no chance of forming by chance. In order to say that nature can explain everything, we, we have a problem. Because that first cell has to be able to form. And if that first cell could not have formed by chance, and what we see in nature appears designed, then the only scientific and the only logical conclusion that we can come to is that intelligence is responsible for the creation of life. The Miller Urey Experiment. In the future, I may make a video exclusively about the Miller-Urey experiment. For now, I'm just going to address a few things in brief. There is a lot of confusion about the Miller-Urey experiment. A lot of people are under the confusion that the Miller-Urey experiment formed life. This is not the case at all. The Miller-Urey experiment formed amino acids, the building blocks of proteins. To say that this shows how life could form from non-life is like saying that bricks were formed naturally, and therefore the pentagon and pyramids could have formed naturally. It simply does not follow. Even Stanley Miller does not believe the wild claims that are made about his experiment, that his experiment showed that life could have formed naturally. 
There are obviously a lot of questions that will arise at this point, such as questions on the RNA world hypothesis. More questions on the Miller-Urey experiment that supposedly showed how life could have formed on the early Earth. Questions about dinosaurs, the development of life, souls, death, God, and the Bible. I will be continuing to make videos. However, these questions are more than what can be addressed in one single video. The nice thing about questions, though, is that they often have answers if we are willing to look for them. Most of these questions are answered on my website, greenslug.com. I encourage you all to look there, try to find some answers, and if you can't find the answers, send me an email. I'll try to make a video. That is all for now. Have a good day, and check out greenslug.com.